Hi, welcome back. <laughs> well, the weather's certainly changed now, and uh, it's got a lot colder coming up to Christmas in the last month now. And uh, we're away at present up in Kent. So, um Anyway, before we left the Mendips, I got to speak to a good old friend of mine, Kev Curtis, who uh, told me some interesting stories of when he used to work down the coal mines. And uh, anyway, take a look, see what you think. Hi, welcome back. And uh, today on my YouTube channel, I've got a really special guest. And I've got <laughs> Kev Curtis, a local guy from Stratton on the Foss. And um, Kevin, hi, thanks for joining me. Hi, Paul. And I was talking to Kevin recently and I didn't realise how much knowledge he had from when he was working down the mines. Now, the mines were a big thing in this area, weren't they, Kevin? Mm, they were at one time, yeah. This is what, late 60s. Late 60s, yeah. We're talking, we're talking all around the Radstock area, uh, what would now be the Baines area. Mm. So you must have had, uh, I don't know, how many mines around this area, Kev? Oh, originally loads, loads, 20, 30 maybe. I mean, it was the it main... Went down to, yeah, it went down to about three or four in, towards yeah. the end but um, but i mean in this area it was the main sort of uh employer wasn't it for oh absolutely yeah you yeah. know for, for a lot of guys in the area yeah oh the, oh, the soil um, underneath was like a well yeah <laughs> and and <laughs> we, the left. <laughs> we also had a lot of guys move to this area from all over the country didn't we to, to take up the work yeah they came down from durham and i think a few came over from ireland yeah yeah they were yeah. Well, Kev, what struck me about um, your stories of when you were down the mine, what people don't realise is what it was actually like, because we can't sort of, a lot of people would never even get the chance to go down a mine again. Like, no, that's true. Like it was. But what I was going to ask you, Kev, is I'd like you to sort of paint a picture for us how old were you when you first went down the mine? Uh, 16. 16. Mm -hmm. So you were out of school. Yeah. Was that your first job out of school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I believe you, you took an apprenticeship, didn't you? Yeah, it was a four and a half year apprenticeship. Yeah, I started mm -hmm. on my, round about my 16th birthday. And then I did, I had to do four and a half years, uh, part Radstock Tech College part in the mines and then as the time went on towards the end of the apprenticeship you were full time in the mines right so uh, yeah it was so which mine were you were you based at one or did you i did a few um well three actually uh started at rock pit so rock pit for anybody is was near Chilcompton. yeah yeah it's Chilcompton, yeah with the steam miner i expect yeah. I, I expect there are yeah. people around that can remember the sound of that yeah and then Norton Hill, and finally ended up at uh, Hayden. Hayden. Yeah. So that's on top of Radstock there, isn't it? Yeah. Hayden yeah. Hill, yeah. Okay, now, so you were 16. What was it like for you? Did you go down the pit day one when you first started? Um, not exactly, no. It was a few weeks. Um, we went to um, Old Mills, I forgot to mention Old that. Mills, yeah. Old Mills, but that was just a training yeah. pit for us. Right. Yes, that was a bit of a shock. <laughs> so I, I just wanted you to paint that picture of going down the mine first 
your first time because it must have been quite frightening at that age sure uh, yeah it was quite intimidating yeah because they they cram you into this small little steel box and then you start going down yeah. and then down and, you, and more down and lots of down yeah. <laughs> and so I, was, is, was it pitch black um or, well you all had your lights on your helmet yeah. they check all that before you go down yeah but, uh, so it wasn't actually pitch black but it was quite frightening to see the walls rushing by at yeah. quite some speed was it, it was it like a drop oh yes yes but it, it was quite if, if there's men riding in the cages it, it wasn't too bad it was like a high speed lift yeah so it, it, it wasn't too bad but i didn't realize that some of the coal fields were about 1500 meters down and um, it's, it's a, that was intimidating 1500 meters sorry 1500 feet 1500 feet yeah yeah, okay. yeah. which meant that's a long way down yeah <laughs> so, a bloody long way down yeah <laughs> it is isn't it? yeah had i known at the time i probably wouldn't have got in the cage because <laughs> yeah. it comes up and it's all dripping with moisture right you know what i mean it's really weird and it looks all rusty and mm -hmm. it rattles and you, you think i'm not getting in there mm. But, but you do and you get used to it, it's fine and it, it bangs from side to side on the guides as you go down. Mm. In actual fact the, the shaft at Old Rock Pit, which is where I was based to start with, had a bend in it. You yeah. get you get halfway down and you're kicked off to one side. And oh crikey. Yeah, I don't know whether it was earth movement or the guy that built it. <laughs> I had too many to drink. Yeah. Did it just naturally go that way then? I, I presume so, yeah, yeah. They, nobody took any notice of it. They just, you just go down and you get thrown to one side. Yeah. And yeah so the first time you went down, down the, down the shaft, and when you come to a stop, what was that like getting out on the bottom, you know? It was warm. Warm. I've always been a lover of the warm, yeah. It's, and there was a funny smell, if you know what I mean. Lots of dust. You could smell the dust in the air. And uh, yeah, it was the warmth mainly. Was it noisy? Um, not terribly, not in the main road, because that's where all the tubs come out. Obviously, down in the workings, it gets a bit noisy down there. Yeah. They had some quite big pieces of machinery down there. But uh, no, it, it was. Once I got used to it, which I did do uh, over the years. I, I used to quite enjoy it. Really? I yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I used. To. Well, it, it, a bit it, of an adventure, I suppose. I suppose it was. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> yeah. So I, 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 I did really like. I don't know whether I actually enjoyed the ride down and up, but the ride down was probably the best because you're going down into the warm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, coming back up in the winter is a bit of a shock because you've been. Well, the poor miners, they've been down there sweating for about six or eight hours. Yeah. And they come up and they're, they're still wet with sweat. And then you come up into a, oh. the frosty air, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So what was your main task when you were down there, first of all? What was your... Uh, basically training. Um, the, the great, yeah, great importance was placed upon safety, especially for us uh, fresh meat, we were called. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and we usually had somebody with us, but as the time went on a few months later, you could wander off on your own at short distances and you, you, you were maybe put along with another engineer or a, mm. maybe a face fitter that would take you around and show you the ropes and you pick all this stuff up. Mm -hmm. And in between you go to the tech college and they teach you all sorts of things like making off armored cables, welding, oh, grinding lathe work. So and any number of you skills. went to Radstock College, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. So that was what sort of year was that? Oh, uh, what would that be? Mm, dear, oh dear. Let's see. If I was sixteen, we'll have to work it out. Forty-seven. I was born, so that's fifty-seven. Oh, sixty-one then. Yeah. So, um, so Kev, what what made you decide on going down the pit in the first place? basically the money right because it was five pounds a week yeah and that was more than they were <clears throat> well it's, it was the best paid apprenticeship in in the area so I decided to go for the five pounds a week right. and uh, my mum said it's always better to get an apprenticeship because 
you'll have a treed when you finish the job. Mm -hmm. But uh, my good mate Royston Hever used to dig holes in the road, and he was on twice my money to start with, and I never ever earned as much as he did. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> maybe towards the end, I, I may have caught him a little bit, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So was that for a basic forty hour? Yes. Yeah. So forty hours, five pounds a week. Mm. Crikey. Yeah. Not. Would you work for that nowadays? Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I I don't. I think cider was nine pence eight me. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't a lost lost yeah. cause. So, don't get me started on that old currency I mean, what, what happened all that <laughs> I just remember the sixpence yeah yeah <laughs> oh it's brilliant it's, it's it's really good talking to you about this because a lot of people would not be able to comprehend what it was like to go down a pit um, yeah. you know I, I just I know I keep going over it, but I I got to admire the miners because they were like, oh, I do, and actually, you know, yeah, 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 um, yeah. and what they went through. Amazing people. Yeah, yeah. So when you went out, say you went out socialising over a weekend, would you meet up with others who you were working with, or was it just you'd go and find your own way around and do your own thing? So yeah, you... my yeah, my social crew were totally different because a lot of the miners were quite a bit older than me yeah there, there's I suppose there may have been 10 or 15 apprentices I suppose which we would be only ones that would be younger than the most of the miners I mean it's I reckon the youngest miner I bumped into would probably be he'd be late 20s mm. and a lot of them were way older than that they'd been doing it all their lives so mm. They were the guys who looked to uh, to look after you and t and yeah. teach you stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it was a little bit weird being that young, mm. sort of being thrown into that sort of thing. But uh, it's amazing. Uh, you get used to it. It's, mm. it's, it's yeah, it's one of those things. In Norton Hill Pit. If you go right down to the bottom. And along about 500 yards, there's a sign that pointing straight up, and that's the fish and chip shop. Really? They were right underneath the fish and chip shop. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah. where, where was, uh, I know I'm probably being silly, but where was the entrance to the Norton Hill one? That would be where the ink factory is now. Oh, the Sun. Is it Sun? Is it Sun Chemicals yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah, that, that whole area was. That uh, was the entrance. That, that, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how many. I mean, if you took a slice out the, all the way across the Mendip Hills and across, you know, this way, you know, and, and seeing where the pits went, I bet you'd be amazed, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I I mean, some of the older miners would know exactly how many pits there were. There were mm. loads and loads and loads, and they all made money mm. for the big boss men, of course, to start with when they were all private. But, uh, of course, there are many places around here where um, somebody was telling me a story back along about where there's coal seams, but it's a case of getting it out. If it yeah. wasn't in a place where they could get access to, it was left, and they say that there is still good coal seams underground. Yes, um, yeah, they reckon there's probably 500 years of coal left down yeah. there in, in places. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you can actually dig coal in um, at Moore Wood and Benter. Yeah, they did, didn't they, for a while? Or yeah, I think, did, I think. Was it open uh, mining or something there, or uh, something like that? that yeah, mm. but you could actually dig it in your garden. But I, whether it would burn or not, I've no idea. It's probably not very good quality. No. But it would it would be very young, I would think. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's coal everywhere. Mm. Yeah, but I've said it before, Kev. You you really don't look old now. Uh, must be all that cold. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good for my skin. <laughs> so, okay, so you went to college. So you were out earning then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, how did it? How did it feel for you to actually? What sort of time of day? What was your your day consisting of? Was um, it, did you? What time did you get up? Oh, normal for um, for Rudstock Tech Tech College. It was just a normal day. Right. 
which was quite refreshing because it broke up the time when you were in the mines and quite often sometimes to start with they put you in on days I believe mm. and then you you can see what all three shifts can do or all two shifts can do right. during the day but then eventually you have to go in at six right and then, then you obviously you work till two or whatever that's yes for a young chap that like some um yeah hot women and cold beer is not very good is it? I mean, <laughs> so f at five o'clock in the morning is not good but uh yeah it's it was a funny old I, I, I did enjoy it, I must admit, okay. and I love working with the miners, they're fantastic yeah. people, yeah, brilliant people. So you, you had the camaraderie, I expect. Was oh, great. yes, yes, and you, you, you knew when you were down there that there would always be somebody to look after you. Yeah. If you do something wrong, they'd tell you, <laughs> I'd give you a smack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they, were, they were nice people, yeah. any one of them would help you out no matter what went wrong, and you'd do the same for them. Yeah because <clears throat> that's what it was all about so did you work sort of Monday to Friday um, towards the end yeah yes yeah. yeah if you count the college days as well yeah in in the mines Monday to Friday would have been the last oh the last 18 months or so of my apprenticeship right. I expect they just sent me off and just put me along with another engineer and away we went and then I use all the skills that I picked up on my uh, mm -hmm. on my previous apprenticeship or my yeah my apprenticeship yeah there's, there's so much to learn is is mine's not quite as simple as some people make out no or, I uh, and I'm probably the same in thinking this I you know back a while ago I probably think you you go to work you go down the shaft you you scuttle about down there and then you do six hours and come home. <laughs> yeah. But it's not quite like that, is yeah. it? And our our job wasn't wasn't quite as physical because we would just go down and repair the machines, or I say just, mm. or I'd go with an, an electrician and he would do all the the gate ends, which is a big switches. It was all sort of high voltage stuff, and then we do a uh, hydraulics, all that sort of stuff, but they wouldn't use hydraulic oil because it's flammable, so they use this. Oh yeah, this yeah. this white stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like milk, like the, <laughs> it's it's milky yeah. stuff. Yeah, it? I can't remember what they call it. But, yeah, but it, but it smelled nice. Yeah, yeah, it smelled uh, quite nice. Yeah, it, did they have the old um, pit props down there? Did oh they? yeah. Did yeah. they? Am I right in saying that I used to hear another guy on about it, and they make noises when it all creaked down there or oh you get lots of creaks yeah 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 especially um i think i was at um i was at rock pit at the time and uh, there was quite a bang and your your, your feet went a little bit mm. do you know what i mean i thought what <laughs> movement in the actual yeah i thought what the hell is that and then somebody one of the miners come along he said oh nothing to worry about he said uh, just a piece of rock fell down that's all because when you take coal out, obviously there is a gap, yeah. and they put in these these piles of blocks, coal blocks they call them. Right. I think they're about six inches square, and they just pile them up into the roof, right. which lets the roof down quietly. Yeah. You can see it actually. Uh, probably that's what the creaking is. It's, it's yeah. squeezing all the juice out of the woods. Right. It just comes down. And, but sometimes, if they haven't put quite enough in, or the the ceiling's a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Broken up, then you'll get quite yeah. big pieces come down, and that's a bit frightening because you can actually feel it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was all right. You get used to it. Well, I, I suppose, but I mean, you know, trying to ask somebody to do that nowadays. You, you did say they had good health and safety. Yes, yes, um, excellent. Yeah, good health and safety, and they had they their um, re recovery teams. I think they called them their. They had good teams where they were trained regularly in case of any accidents. Oh like yes, yes, and there were deputies down there as well. Yeah, that would. Uh, they were on the go all the time, looking around, yeah. making sure everything was running as it should. And I was never allowed to go into a a coal face that was running because I wasn't old enough and I hadn't done the training. But as soon as they stopped the machines for us to repair them, I could go in. Ah, right. <clears throat> and that was a bit of a squeeze, even for me. You know, so what sort of yeah, what sort of working space are we talking? 
Well, I think at, at Rock Pit, they, they went down to about 18 inches in places. They were working in 18 inches? In, in places, yeah, yeah. It wasn't totally 18 inches. I think it, probably the average was maybe a couple of feet. Yeah. But if you can imagine that, that's that's not much, is it? Well, that's, that's <laughs> nothing, is it, really? That's, <laughs> no. that's like... No, no, if you put on a bit of weight, you're, well, yeah. you're up the creek. Mm. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. But, okay, so... Did the working life, going down the pit, did it come as a shock to you? You know, were you a... Uh... The hours did. Yeah. Yes, because, like I said before, be, being a young teenager, I, I mean, I just wanted to get out and have fun, mm. which is why I joined the Cold War Apprenticeship Scheme, because they were paying £40 a week, right. which is more than anybody else, more than the uh, South Western Electricity Board. Yeah, yeah, I remember you saying yeah, that. And yeah, and even a bit more than BAC in Bristol, because my mum wanted me to go into the British Aircraft Corporation yeah. in, in Bristol, because I was good at uh, technical drawing, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's 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 why I went because mm. because of the money. Mm. But when I was down there, I thought, yeah, it's it's all right. I mean, so you were in, is that how much you were earning? Yes, five, and my mum used to have some of that as well. Five pence a week. Yes, and I had just enough to get me in beer through the weekend left. I, I was just gonna, <laughs> I was gonna come on to that because <laughs> if you if you. Um, if you think about the social side of things, mm. did you have a social life? Did you, you know? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you just work around it. I mean, if you were on more, well, I didn't go too far in the week. Obviously, the weekends is, mm. is yeah, I, I must admit, I did miss quite a few Saturday morning overtimes. <laughs> but uh, I was young, you know. You, yeah. I, I did settle down a little bit towards the end of the apprenticeship. You get a bit more sensible. Mm. But, uh, Yes, it was a bit awkward. I mean, when everybody's out enjoying themselves at half 11, 12 o'clock at night, and they're all drinking like fishes, and you think, I've got to be up at five o'clock tomorrow. Oh, God, yeah. It does put you off a little bit. I mean, I did actually make it in for overtime a couple of times. Mm. Yeah, my friend Dick Coles used to, I think he picked me up once or twice, or uh, I, I would work with him, and he, he didn't stress me out too much. Did he? he was a... <laughs> Man after my own heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you started off roughly at those at uh, uh, Rock, yeah. Yeah. Is that old old Rock or new? Yes, yeah, so I don't know how they. I don't they, know they've they renamed them over the years. Yeah, I mean, Rock Pit is the old one. Yeah. The new one at the top is either Strap or Mendip, mm -hmm. various other names through the years because it, it was a I think it was filled in twice. And then reopened again. Oh right. So uh, yeah, because the shaft was all new, and it was a, it was a, so you could, you could pull more coal up each time because you oh, had a, a, a balanced weight to, to take the weight. Right. Whereas at Rock, it was a single pull. Yeah. Which is what went badly wrong when they took out the steam winder, because the steam winder would lift three tubs off the bottom, and four tons of rope it, straight up. So they put an electric one in because it was right. more efficient and it wouldn't move it. <laughs> they, they couldn't get it to work at all. But, oh, there is a story about this steam winder actually because it was a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And this guy, I'm sure his name was Coles, but there, there was a, there was a few drivers and they were, they were fastidious about this massive machine, and it, it was like I said, it was just beautiful to see it running. And we had to smash it up, all the castings were all broken up to be taken away for scrap, which is such yeah, a shame, yeah. Wicked, we had two sledgehammers. Right. One was called Monday and he was twenty eight pound because <laughs> Monday's about the only day you could lift it. And the <laughs> other one was called Tuesday and he was twenty four pounds. <laughs> so <laughs> you could only you could only use it about twice. Yeah. Once you get it above your head, you know, it's uh, yeah, but it, it it seems such a shame. I don't think that would happen nowadays. I mean, it, the thing must have been worth a fortune, mm. absolute fortune. We are gonna. We said about visiting the museum down at Radstock, haven't we? The Minos Museum. Yes, yes. Because that I think would be quite a nice little um, trip. I might do a bit of filming. Yeah, there, I've been meaning to go down there for years, mm. and maybe even go to one of the one of the miners' reunions, but. Mm. Uh, I always seem to be doing something else, which is a bit of a shame. 
because mm. they're falling by the wayside, aren't yeah. they? You know? so, yeah. Uh, so, um, how did things progress? Any what things struck in your mind when you were um, you were obviously getting along on your training and things like that? The bathhouse. The bathhouse. Yes, that was quite intimidating right. for a young lad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, because there's two ends of the bathhouse. <clears throat> you get the dirty end, so you come in off the whatever you've been doing. Yeah. And you're usually black. So you So you literally come up and you were black as anything when you come out of the cage. Yeah, straight down to the dirty end, take yeah. all your clothes off, and then you walk up to the clean end where the showers are. Right. Take your towel and your soap and everything. So it was a little bit intimidating for a young chap like me, all these male floppy bits. You know, <laughs> not used to that. But anyway, uh, you, you, yeah, you. I, I get what you're saying because you're trying to paint a picture here of what it was actually like. Because yeah, we can't imagine yeah. that now. Because <laughs> anywhere in work where you've got a, sh a shower block or anything nowadays, yeah, it's all private. Isn't it's it? all private and it's spotlessly clean. Yeah, well, this was pretty clean, but it, it was all open. Right. And uh, you just stand in the shower and. Mm. I was going away and all of a sudden somebody started washing my back. I thought, well, it's nice, but <laughs> is, this, is this really what happened? <laughs> but that's what he did. Yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, you can't do your own very well. No, I mean, no, some, no. some of the miners had a, yeah. had a brush they could get around the back, but no, most, it was, it was just done things, what people did. And there's one guy, an old guy, and uh, he seemed to be very quiet, ever such a quiet chap. And I, I couldn't, if I saw him now, obviously, he's probably passed away, I don't know. But uh, I was doing his back, and he had a tattoo on his back, and it was a full hunting scene. All the way down, all well, right the way down. And if you look down the bottom, just between the cracks of his bum, there was a fox's tail hanging out. <laughs> and I thought that was absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. But like I say, it, it was... Yes, it, it was really intimidating to start with. Yeah, but it's yeah. just you just get used to it. It's yeah, yeah. It's like going down in the cage. It's it's just run of the mill after a while. You talk about it as though, you know, it it was fine, and I I think, you know, from what you said to me, you took it on the chin. Really, you just went and get on, got on with it. Whereas yeah, basically, yeah, you know, yeah I, I just think job, going, really. perhaps it's just me going down the pit. Going down that cage for me probably would have been quite frightening coming out of school and going straight down. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did have the trembles, mind the first time. It mm. wasn't, uh, yeah, it didn't all go uh, smooth as yeah, silk. But yeah. Uh, yeah, like I say, you get used to it. You learn to trust things. Because mm. I mean, these these miners, they've been doing that sort of thing for years. Yeah. It's yeah. all second nature to them. So you just take a leaf out of their book, you know. Mm. And, yeah. Uh, did did you have any other family in the pit or? No. <clears throat> oh, uh, my granddad, I think, worked in the pits for a while. Mm. Yes, he did because he was offered his house, uh, Dolverton Cottage, in Chilcumpton. Right. He used to rent that, and I think it was offered to him um, by the coal board, and what they wanted for it was ridiculous. I mean, he should have jumped at it. Even back then, it was so cheap that uh, he didn't take it, he just rented it. So, but uh, mm. yeah, so my granddad, yes, he, he, he was a miner as well. I think a lot of families years ago, there aren't many families who aren't who haven't had somebody in their family down the pit because it was a major employer, wasn't it? Yeah, so, quite so. You know, I, I certainly had an uncle and a grandfather. Um, I remember grandfather, certainly, I said to you, you used to suffer from the breathing when he come back up um yeah I, I was lucky in a sense because they'd upgraded all the all the dust systems i mean they had a an up pit and a down pit so the air was yeah being you know, flushed through all the time yeah yeah so there wasn't yes there was a lot of dust on the faces in the old roads but uh the main routes down the pit were they weren't too bad i mean it wasn't fresh air by any means but yeah, the dust wasn't too bad. It was bearable. Mm. And as far as I know, so far, we've had no repercussions anyway. So, mm. yeah, everything went really well. So, you mentioned about machinery down the pit. 
Mm. How did they build that down there? Did they take the bits down and build it, or did they get it down somehow? Or yeah, it would have been taken down in in parts and then bolted yeah. together because some of it was huge, absolutely monstrous. Especially the the belt drive. You can imagine what sort of engine you need to to pull a belt that's probably I don't know a quarter of a mile long. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they were quite big things. Mm. And the same with the face equipment, that was uh, some pretty heavy stuff. <clears throat> they used to use plows or coal cutters. The, the plow was favoured at, at Rock because because of the width of the seams. And uh, they were quite tidy, it just drove up and down like that and just take out as much as you want. Right. And then they were, it, apparently somebody insisted that they have to use coal cutters and then it all went pear-shaped after that, I think. Oh. Because they they were like giant chainsaws and just oh, right. slash into it, so you get all the stone and rubble and all the detritus with it as well. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there was a few mistakes made, but there we go. So what sort of year did that take you up to? You finish your apprenticeship there, yeah? I did, yes. So that what would that have been? Sixteen twenty. I would have been twenty and a half when I finished my apprenticeship. Yeah. But I, I, I stayed on because I spent some time at Norton Hill and then I went to Hayden because basically if I went to work at a mine they shut it shortly after. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Because <laughs> Rock Pit went in 68 and I think Norton Hill went shortly after. I don't know whether Hayden was the last one but it was still running when I was there mm. and I can't remember staying there that long. To be honest, by then I could, I could go down on my own. So yeah. I, I was trained. So, uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure about Hayden, hmm. but that's what happened. I went to a pit and it shut. So I was like you, a curse. you were cursed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what happened when you came out the pit? Did you move on to better things or? Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say better things. No, I went to Claire's Engineering in Wells. Right making supermarket trolleys. Okay, but it, it set you up, basically, it give you the fundamentals of oh, yeah, welding yeah. and engineering. Yeah, my apprenticeship taught me welding anyway. Yeah. I had a good brain in, in, in all sorts of welding, so, uh, and I was ideal, yeah. 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 In, well, I ended up, I, don't, I was only in Claire's for, I think it was about four and a half years, but by, three years they put me in charge of the welding machines and right. sent me away on a course to repair the welding machines oh, which right. were uh, well they were mig welding Mids, by then yeah. yeah and what sort of amperage did they go up to oh no idea we used to run them pretty hot yeah i mean you you break all the rules when you're production welding mm. i mean you don't you don't fiddle faddle about with a little spark yeah know? yeah <laughs> You sort of turn it up as high as it will go yeah. and just blast it in as quick as you can. Mm. Yeah, probably about, I don't know, about 120, I suppose, 120 mm. amps, something like that. Mm. Yeah. Kev, thank you ever so much for taking the time out to speak to thank us. Thank you, Paul, yeah. For our YouTube channel, Tells from the Van 2020. Tells from the Van? Tells from the Van. Oh, right. But um, we've crept out of the van today and we've come into Kev's. Uh, garden house which is beautiful so um <laughs> thanks for that and um let's visit it again and we'll uh we'll see what else you you can come up with yeah thanks right. paul thank you very much yeah